everybody, it's Miss Trisha. Look, I'm in the art studio. It's so exciting to be back here. The only thing missing is all you guys, and I miss you guys so much. My goodness. I hope that you've been having a really good time at home um, in just like the longest spring break ever. And I hope you've been drawing, and I hope that you have been excited about your own artwork. But I'm going to start giving a couple of little lessons so that we can um, just keep coming to school. But now we're going to come to school through the internet. It's so weird and different. It's different for me. I'm sure for me. I'm sure it's different for you. Um, but I think we can do this. I think that this can work really well. And I hope that you guys are on board with me and we can have fun together and draw together. Um, this week, we're going to do something simple. We haven't, um, we've drawn a few birds this year. And so I thought we would continue. Like I think the last bird we drew was a kookaburra and that was really fun. And everybody's birds looked really cool. Everybody from my preschool classes all the way up to my elementary classes. So we're going to do a bird today. We're going to do a cardinal. All the spring birds are out. They're really beautiful. Um, I've just been listening to them sing around the campus today. And they're just, gosh, I love birds so much. So we're gonna do a cardinal. For my older students, the cardinal I'm gonna do is stylized. It's gonna be a little cartoonish. Um, you are more than welcome to take that in whichever direction you want. You can make it more realistic in your mind, or you can go full out and make it like a, a cartoon uh, cardinal and maybe start a comic strip. If you guys, have at your house a sketchbook. This is the perfect thing to start putting in your sketchbook, these drawings of birds. Um, if you don't, if you just are using a regular piece of paper, that's fine too. Either way, as you can see from my pretend paper I drew on my whiteboard, we're going to be in the portrait orientation today. Portrait orientation. Um, one of the things you guys know, but if parents are watching along, we talk a lot when we do these drawings about having sketch lines and draw lines. So sketch lines are very light. With my pencil, I'm just touching as light as possible. And depending on you students, if you're very young, this might look different than if you're an one of my older students, and that's fine. But when we're doing our sketch, they aren't going to be our final lines in our drawing. Some of them might be, but most of them won't. They're helping us build the shape of our drawing, and um, we don't have to erase them And if they're drawn very light. And if we do want to erase them and they're drawn light, they're easy to erase. So these lines we may want to erase. Some of them we definitely will want to erase. So they're going to be light very light, light pressure. You can practice this on the back of your page if you want. Light, light pressure. Now, I cannot draw on my whiteboard with a pencil. So the green Expo marker, dry erase marker, is going to be my draw lines because it is a lighter color. And that's what my draw lines will look like today. Or, excuse me, my sketch lines. My sketch lines will be the green. Now my draw lines, whenever I'm drawing with a pencil, are darker. And they can be different shades of dark. Some are going to be very dark. Some are going to be not quite as dark. And again, my younger students out there, it's okay if they're all very dark, or only medium dark, or only light dark. It's okay. Just know that we're going to draw over those first lines the second time around. And for my older students, hey, this would be a great time to practice with pressure. How much pressure am I pushing down on my pencil? Do I want the beak of this bird to be really dark? So I'm going to put more pressure there. And maybe the draw lines on the feathers, I'm going to be lighter. Hey, experiment with that, OK? Now, the draw lines are going to be with the black. So. Whenever I'm done with my sketch, my drawing is going to be with the black dry erase marker. And I'm going to draw 
right over my sketch lines that I want to keep. Some of them I might not want to keep. The ones that I don't want to keep, they'll just stay green and they'll be easy for me to erase later on. Last thing to know before we start the bird is that we're going to be using one pattern from nature and that's the wave pattern and two shapes. We're going to be using circles, which actually is a pattern from nature too, right? We have the circular pattern from nature. So we're going to be using circles and we're going to be using triangles. Well, you know what I just realized? We will be using another pattern in nature besides a wave pattern, which can go in many different ways. We might be using some lobes, the lobe pattern for feathers. Okay? All right, let me erase those because those are distracting. And we will start. As I start, I have my green sketch marker for our sketch lines, which means you are drawing light with your pencil. And I have my paper in portrait orientation. Now, the difference between that is this is portrait, this is landscape. Now, portrait means drawing a picture of someone or an animal's face. We're not going to be drawing an animal's face only, but I like the space I get, this vertical space that's happening on my support. And I want all that space for my cardinal because he's going to be sitting up straight on his branch and I want more space for him to be sitting up straight. So, my pretend paper is drawn right here. Sorry, I dropped my paper. My pretend paper is drawn right here in a portrait orientation and I'm going to start by coming over here and I'm going to draw a circle right in the middle of my page. Now, if I make this circle too big, I'm not gonna have room for the tail and the head. So it's gonna be in the middle of my page, I would say a medium-ish circle. It's not tiny. I'm not doing a teeny weeny one like this. That would be too small. And I'm not gonna make one so big that I don't have any room to draw the rest of the bird around it. Cause this is going to be the belly and the breast and the torso of my bird. So I'm gonna make it right about here, about that big. This cardinal is so excited that the seeds are all out and it's getting nice and, and fat and happy from eating well after this winter time. So he's a little round and plump guy and he's all fluffed out. Now the next circle I'm gonna do is right here. Now, at this point, I tend to ask the children, what do you think that is? <laughs> so students, what do you think that is? It's gonna be the head. And then the third circle, oh, did I mention there's only four circles? There's only four circles. The third circle is gonna go right here. Now what's that? I'm gonna let that unfold and let you figure that one out. But that's the third circle of our, of our cardinal. And the last circle, I might as well draw it right now, right? It's gonna go right here. So four circles. Now, I said we were doing four circles. We're going to do 11. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven 10, 11 triangles on this cardinal. And the first triangle I'm gonna draw, this will help this mystery be solved, is going to go right here. And the point's gonna go down. There's my first triangle. Now, what do you think that circle was part of? If you guessed wing, you guessed right. The next triangle I'm going to draw is going to go right here and it's going to be pointing in another way. So that's two triangles. I know, I'm gonna have 11. Where am I gonna put all these triangles? Well, just watch. The next triangle is going to go right here. 
think that's a beak? If it is, the bird's looking straight up in the sky. Well, let's see. That's only three, and we have 11 minus three. That means we have eight more triangles to go. So we'll see. We'll see where this goes. So the next triangle I'm going to do is going to go right here. That looks more like a beak to me. So what this is, is called a crest. Cardinals are one of the birds out there in the world that has a tuft of feathers on their head that they can move up and down. Um, and sometimes it's really sharply right straight up like a triangle just popped like a party hat on top of their head. So that is going to be the cardinal's crest and this is gonna be the cardinal's beak. Okay, where are we at here? We are at one, two, three, four. Now, the next triangle I'm going to do goes here. Now that is going to be what we call the cardinal's masks. So a male, this is a male cardinal. They're the ones that are all red. They have a dark mask on their face that goes around their eyes of feathers, dark black feathers. So that's the cardinal's mask. Okay. That's five triangles. Where are the other six going to be? Because five plus six equals 11. We have to wait a second for that because I have to do my wave pattern. And I am putting a wave pattern in here because right now, without its wings open to fly, because its wings are closed, my cardinal is just floating in space. And I need to put it on something so it doesn't just look like it's just magically lifted into the air without using its own wings to lift it up. So I'm going to put a wave pattern, two, right next to each other, underneath here. And because I'm using my sketch lines, remember you're drawing very light with your pencil, I can just draw right over the lines I've already drawn to make a branch. There we go. Hmm. I think I'll do it underneath. And I'm going to follow that same wave pattern right across my page. Now. If you want to add branching patterns in here, you can. You could add some twigs coming off our branch with little spring flowers or little spring leaves, but you don't have to. Right now though, I just wanted to make sure I had this wave pattern for the branch, but my bird, he's still just floating above the branch. I have to do something about that. What would he use to hold on to the branch? He doesn't have hands like us, so he wouldn't hold on to his branch with his hands. What do you think he would use? He would use his feet, and his feet have little claws on them, and they have three in the front and one in the back, but we're not gonna be able to see the one in the back because those are gonna be behind the branch. We're just gonna see the three in the front. Now, his little claws have to be uh, on his little feet have to be attached to his body by something. So what would they be attached to his body with? With his legs, of course. And I'm gonna do his legs with wave patterns too. They're just gonna be one curve of the wave though. So watch, like I did the branch, they're going to be running parallel to each other, and, but they're gonna be much skinnier and they're just gonna be one curve of the wave. So they're gonna go like this. will be one leg. And that'll be two legs. Okay. Now, the triangles, the six triangles are going to be the three toes on each of his two feet. And if you remember right, that means he's going to have three plus three, and that equals six. Six more triangles. And they're going to look like this. One, two, three, four, five, six. Cardinals have very tiny, delicate little toes. We don't have to make them very big. 
Okay, let's see here. One, two, three, four circles. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven triangles. Four circles and eleven triangles. And my sketch is done. I've made the base that I'm going to draw on. And already it's recognizably a bird. So now, I'm getting my draw marker. So remember, our draw lines, we're gonna do more pressure. And one of the first things I like to do when I do my draw line, I don't erase any of my sketch lines yet. My sketch lines are gonna stay there for a while. But I'm going to outline, get, get the basic outline of my drawing with my draw marker. So I'm gonna start here on the beak. I feel like this is where I can make changes because my sketch lines are light. I can just draw right over them. I feel like my triangle of my crest is a little too pointy and a little too high up. So I'm just gonna draw right over it and bring it back a little bit and down. So do you see how I decided? I made this decision. I made this decision while I was drawing that I didn't like how high it was. So I can change it because when I'm done with my drawing, I can go back and erase that sketch line. It's just a sketch line. And then I'm gonna bring, instead of drawing all the way around the circle, I'm gonna blend his head into his body by going right across to the back of his wing, like that. And then, that's a really cool pointy, pointy wing, but bird's wings are soft and they have a little curve to them and they have all these different feathers. So as I, as I go down his wing, I'm gonna add some feathery type lines all the way up. And I don't want it to go all the way around, so I'm gonna leave those sketch lines there for me to erase later. Now, his, same with his tail, right? His tail does not have to be so squared off or triangled off. So I'm going to soften it up a little bit. I'm going to come over here right under this wing and go down. And these are really, remember I said, I forgot, we are going to be doing some lobes. These are really lobe shapes or a wave shape that I've added to the shape of these triangles as I do my draw lines. Now I'm going to come over here Instead of having just this really, really, you know, stark circle, I'm going to give a little mound for where his feet come down over those waves. Did you see that? Two little lumps, two little lobes coming off of the circle shape. And then I'm going to bring this up here and right up to his beak. And finish it up. So that's the outline of it. Now I'm going to do. So their little, their little legs, they have little cute knobby knees. They're adorable. So I'm going to put a little knobby knee at the back of these wave lines. If that's too hard to make, just trace the wave lines. That's fine. So there's his little knobby knees. And I'm going to curve the top of these triangles that are going to be his talons. So I'm taking my triangles that I did as my sketch and they're becoming more teardrop because I curved the top of them and I curved the bottom down a little bit. Again, if you leave them just like triangles, that's fine too. All right, now, hmm, I have to make a decision. I'm gonna make, sh I'm gonna have his little tail in front of my branch. So I'm gonna have to stop and start as I draw over the wave that I sketched. So watch how I do that. I'm gonna go right over my wave and I'm gonna make it a little, oh, my makeup words, parents, a little grubbly. It's gonna be like bumpy and grumpy it's a grumpy old tree. And uh, I'm gonna be going over here 
and just making it, I'm doing a wave within a wave, really, it's a wave pattern. I'll go up my little branching twig. There we go. Again, if you want to make it smooth, it's your cardinal. Draw it the way you want to draw it. And then I'll do it down here. do one more thing that I definitely have to do before I erase my sketches is I have to get my cardinal's eye in here and the mask and I'm going to make it a little more like that so that triangle was just to hold my place now the beaks if you have crayons or watercolors or markers and you want to color this in cardinal's beaks are really really kind of orangey red and then their bodies are cardinal red they're just a beautiful beautiful deep red their wings are more of um, a, like a barn red they're a little browner and darker up at the top and then cardinal red at the bottom their tails are a little darker red and then this mask is black their little legs are gray so if you have crayons, if you don't, just draw it. Just draw it. I would know this was a cardinal, honestly, because the beak is short. If, if, if it had a longer, skinnier beak, I might go, oh, maybe that's a J. But, because J's have longer beaks, but I know it's a cardinal. Okay, so I've got my basic beginning draw lines in. I'm going to erase, I'm using my finger because if I use this, I'm afraid I'd erase my draw lines. I'm going to erase my sketch lines that I don't want to keep, which is anything that I didn't draw over with draw lines. I don't want to keep where that branch went over my tail. Okay, now I can do more. If you don't want to do more, you don't have to do more, but I could do more. I could make the top of the bird's wings where there's the shorter feathers here. I could put some of those in with lobes. And then I could put in some of the flight feathers. With long skinny lobes, I could do some of the feathery shapes in the tail. If I wanted to, I could even do little, just almost a scatter pattern of little feathery shapes on the breast to show that he's like kind of fluffed up. And color this in dark. This is would be dark. This is the mask. I could add some feathery shapes up here. expect yours to look even better than mine because it's hard to draw on a whiteboard and and to erase I like the way that turned out I do okay so for especially for my older students if you're an elementary student who's doing this and even my kindergartners if you're into it think about what could be in the background what could be in the background of my cardinal, cardinal sitting there on its branch um, are there leaves on the branches? I'm going to put some little baby leaves coming out since it's springtime. Are there clouds in the sky? It must be a high pressure system. It's the bottom of my clouds are flat. Is the sun out? Are there other birds flying really far away? Can you see the ground below him? Going off in the distance? Oh wait, the trees are really far away. Are they bigger or smaller? So what can you add to your cardinal? I'm so excited to see this, um, to, to see that we are able to do an art lesson this way, even though we can't be in the art studio together. Um, please, um, 
I'm trying to think, how could, how could I get to see some of your art? Um, if you want to follow me on Instagram, I'm Starlight Retro, Starlight Retro on Instagram, because a lot of you guys know I have my little antiques business. I haven't posted anything there for a long time, but if you send me a friend request on Instagram and you want to take a picture of your child's art, I would love to be able to follow you uh, back and then be able to see your kids art that would make my day because it is a little weird for me to teach this way and I miss you guys so much so um, or you know post uh, link them is that what you call it <laughs> link it to the Cottonwood uh, Instagram and then I can see it there I'm not on Facebook really um, so there you go guys our little cardinal I hope you enjoyed drawing it and I can't wait to do another lesson next week. Miss you guys. Bye.